Hi there, thanks for joining me. I would like to share with you an article that is about the coming new mini ice age. The title is Diminishing Solar Activity May Bring New Ice Age by 2030. This is from the website Astronomy Now. It's a UK astronomy magazine website. This was released from the Lomonosov Moscow State University Press. And the article is stating that the arrival of intense cold similar to the one that raged during the Little Ice Age, which froze the world during the 17th century and in the beginning of the 18th century, is expected in the years 2030 to 2040. These conclusions were presented by Professor Sarkova, during the National Astronomy Meeting in Landudno in Wales by an international group of scientists, which also includes Dr. Helen Popova of the Skobeltsin Institute of Nuclear Physics and of the Faculty of Physics of the Lomonosov Moscow State University. Professor Simon Shepard of Bradford University and Dr. Sergei Sarkov of Hall University. The article further states that it is known that the Sun has its own magnetic field, the amplitude and spatial configuration of which vary with time. The formation and decay of strong magnetic fields in the solar atmosphere results in the changes of electromagnetic radiation from the Sun. The intensity of plasma flows coming from the Sun and the number of sunspots on the sun's surface are also resulting from the sun's activity. Further, the study talks about how the study of changes in the number of sunspots on the sun's surface is cyclical, and that varies every 11 years, impacting the Earth's environment. There are several cycles with different periods and properties. The 11-year cycle and the 90-year cycles are the best known of all of them. The 11-year cycle appears as a cyclical reduction in spots on the surface of the sun every 11 years. And the 90-year variation is associated with periodic reduction, about 50 to 25 percent, in the number of spots on the sun's surface. In the 17th century, there was a prolonged reduction in solar activity called the Maunder Minimum, which lasted roughly about 50 plus years from 1645 to 1700. During this period, there were only about 50 sunspots instead of the usual 40 to 50,000 sunspots in one year. Analysis of solar radiation showed that its maxima and minima almost coincide with the maxima and minima in the number of spots expected during this coming period. The researchers developed a new method of analysis which helped to uncover that the magnetic waves in the sun are generated in pairs, with the main pair covering 40% of variants of data. The principal component pair is responsible for the variations of a dipole field of the sun, which is changing its polarity from pole to pole during its 11-year solar activity. The article further states, the magnetic waves travel from the opposite hemisphere to the northern hemisphere during odd cycles, or the southern hemisphere during even cycles, with the phase shift between the waves increasing with a cycle number. The waves interact with each other in the hemisphere where they have maximum, northern for odd cycles and southern for even cycles. So these two components are assumed to originate in two different layers in the sun, interior, inner and outer, with close but not equal frequencies. The scientists managed to derive the analytical formula describing the evolution of these two waves and calculated the summary curve which was linked to the variation of sunspot numbers, the original proxy of solar activity if one used the modulus of the summary curve. 
By using this formula, the scientists made the prediction of magnetic activity in the cycle 24, which gave 97% accuracy in comparison with the principal components derived from the observations. Inspired by this success, the authors extended the prediction of these two magnetic waves to the next two cycles, 25 and 26, and discovered that the waves become fully separated into the opposite hemispheres in cycle 26, thus have little chance of interacting and producing sunspot numbers. This could lead to a sharp decline in solar activity in years 2030 to 2040 comparable with the conditions existed previously during the Mandar minimum in the 17th century when there were only about 50 to 70 sunspots observed instead of the usual 50,000. The new reduction of the solar activity will lead to reduction of the solar irradiance also. This could result in significant cooling of Earth with very severe winters and cold summers. Several studies have shown that the Maunder minimum coincided with the coldest phase of the Earth's cooling, which was called the Little Ice Age. During this period, there were very cold winters in Europe and North America. In the days of the Maunder minimum, the water in the River Thames and the Danube River froze. The Moscow River was covered by ice every six months. Snow lay on some plains year-round and Greenland was covered by glaciers, says Dr. Helen Popova, who developed a unique physical mathematical model of the evolution of the magnetic activity of the sun and used it to gain patterns of occurrence of global minima of solar activity and gave them a physical interpretation. If a similar reduction will be observed during the upcoming Maunder minimum, this can lead to the cooling of Earth's atmosphere. According to Dr. Helen Popova, if the existing theories about the impact of solar activity on the climate are true, then this minimum will lead to a significant cooling, much like the one that occurred during the Maunder minimum in the 17th century. However, only time will show within the next 5 to 15 years, if this will happen. Given that our future minimum will last for at least 3 solar cycles, which is about 30 years, it's possible that the lowering of the temperature will not be as deep as during the Maunder minimum, but we will have to examine it in detail. We keep in touch with climatologists from different countries. We plan to work in this direction, Dr. Popova said and the notion that solar activity affects the climate appeared long ago. It's known, for example, that a change in the total quantity of the electromagnetic radiation by only 1% can result in a noticeable change in the temperature distribution and airflow all over the Earth. Ultraviolet rays cause photochemical effect which lead to the formation of ozone at the altitude of 30 to 40 kilometers. The flow of ultraviolet rays increases sharply during chromospheric flares in the sun. Ozone which absorbs the sun's rays well enough is being heated and it affects the air currents in the lower layers of the atmosphere and consequently it affects the weather. Powerful emission of corpuscules, which can reach the Earth's surface, arise periodically during the high solar activity. They can move in complex trajectories, causing aurorae, geomagnetic storms, and disturbances of radio communication. By increasing the flow of particles in the lower atmospheric layers, air flows of meridional direction enhance warm currents from the south with even greater energy rush in the high latitudes and cold currents, carrying arctic air, which penetrate deeper into the south. In addition, the solar activity affects the intensity of fluxes of galactic cosmic rays. The minimum activity streams become more intense, which also affects the chemical processes in the Earth's atmosphere. 
Dr. Helen Popova is cautious about the human influence on climate. When she was asked, she said, there is no strong evidence that global warming is caused by human activity. The study of deuterium in the Antarctic showed that there were five global warming and four ice ages for the past 400,000 years. However, even if human activities influence the climate, we can say that the sun with the new minimum gives humanity more time or a second chance to reduce the industrial emissions and to prepare when the sun will return to normal activity. Dr. Helen Popova summarized. And this concludes the article on the diminishing solar activity that could bring by a new ice age during our lifetime by 2030. Again, I quoted from an article on the website Astronomy Now. It is a UK astronomy magazine. I will post a link to this website below the video, so I hope you check it out. Thank you so much for visiting with me and hope you have a wonderful day.